I am Dr. Sabnayan, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology, Kakanad. And I will be handling some topics from Module 5. The topics include Smart Antenna as well as Antennas for Mobile Base Station and Handsets. Spatial Processing is the central idea of Adaptive Antennas or Smart Antenna Systems. As the number of users and demand for wireless services increases at an exponential rate, the need for wider coverage area and higher transmission quality rises. Smart antenna systems provide a solution to this problem. The de definition for smart antenna can be stated as smart antenna system combines multiple antenna elements with signal processing capability to optimize the radiation or reception pattern automatically in response to the signal environment. To understand more about smart antennas, let us consider human body system. Imagine two persons carrying out a conversation inside a dark room. The listener is capable of determining the location of the speaker because the voice of the speaker arrives at each acoustic sensor that is ear at a different time. The human signal processor, which is the brain, computes the direction of the speaker from the time differences or delays of the voice received by two ears. Then, brain adds the strength of the signals from each ear so as to focus on the sound of the computed direction. Also, if additional speakers join in the conversation, the brain can tune out unwanted interferers and concentrate on one conversation at a time. The listener can respond back to the same direction of the desired speaker by orienting the transmitter, which is the mouth, towards the speaker. Smart antenna systems work the same way using two antennas instead of two ears and a digital signal processor instead of brain, as shown in the figure. Digital signal processor measures time delays from each antenna element, computes direction of arrival DOA of the signal of interest that is SOI. Then adjusts the excitations that is gain and phases of the signals to produce a radiation pattern that focuses on signal of interest while tuning out any signal not of interest. In this example shown, uh, they have used two antennas. Maintaining capacity has always been a challenge as the number of services and subscribers increased. To justify the need for smart antenna systems in current cellular system structure, a brief history on evolution of cellular radio system is presented. Omnidirectional systems in which each hexagonal area represents a small geographical area named cell with maximum radius capital R as shown in the figure. At the center of each cell resides a base station equipped with an omnidirectional antenna with a given band of frequencies. Base stations in adjacent cells are assigned frequency bands that contain different frequencies compared to the neighboring cells. By limiting the coverage area to within the boundaries of a cell, the same band of frequencies may be used to cover different cells that are separated from one another by distances large enough to keep interference levels below the threshold of others. The design process of selecting and allocating the same band of frequencies to different cells of cellular base stations within a system is referred to as frequency reuse. Due to omnidirectional pattern, only a small percentage of total energy reached the desired user. Remaining energy was radiated in undesired directions. As the number of users increases, interference increases and hence capacity decreased. An immediate solution to this problem was to divide cell into smaller cells referred to as cell splitting. As shown in the figure, in cell splitting, a contested cell is subdivided into smaller cells called microcells, each with its own base station and a corresponding reduction in antenna height and transmitted power. Cell splitting improves capacity by decreasing the cell radius R and keeping d by r ratio unchanged where d is the distance between centers of the clusters the disadvantages of cell splitting are first one the cost incurred from installation of new base stations then second one increase in number of handoffs and handoff is the process of transferring communication from one base station to another when the mobile unit travels from one cell to another 
and the third disadvantage is higher processing load per subscriber. As the demand for wireless service grew even higher, the number of frequencies assigned to a cell eventually became insufficient to support the required number of subscribers. Thus, a cellular design technique was needed to provide more frequencies per coverage area. A technique called cell sectoring was introduced in which a single omnidirectional antenna is replaced at base station with several directional antennas. Typically, a cell is sectorized into three sectors of 120 degree each, as shown in the figure. By reducing the number of cells in a cluster and thus increasing frequency reuse, capacity improvement is achieved. Co-channel interference decreases. Penalty for improved S by N signal to noise ratio and capacity are first one increase in number of antennas at base station and second one decrease in trunking efficiency where trunking efficiency is a measure of number of users that can be offered service with a particular configuration of fixed number of frequencies. Figure shows a comparison of co-channel interference between sectorized systems as well as omnidirectional systems. As shown in figure, the co-channel interference decreases in sectorized systems since only two neighboring cells interfere instead of six for omnidirectional systems. Cell sectoring did not provide solution needed for capacity problem. Therefore, system designers began to look into a system that could dynamically sectorize a cell. There came the idea of smart antennas. In reality, antennas are not smart. It is the digital signal processing along with antennas that makes the system smart. Smart antennas are an extension of cell sectoring in which the sector coverage is composed of multiple beams. And smart antenna systems are realized by use of antenna arrays. Since smart antennas can focus their radiation pattern towards the desired users while rejecting unwanted interferences, they can provide greater coverage area for each base station. The advantages of smart antenna systems are, first one, they have higher rejection interference, then second one, lower bit error rate, third one, they can provide substantial capacity improvement. And smart antenna systems can generally be classified as switched beam systems as well as adaptive array systems. Switched beam system. It is a system that can choose from one of the many predefined patterns in order to enhance the received signal. It is an extension of cell sectoring as each sector is subdivided into smaller sectors. As the mobile unit moves throughout the cell, the system detects the signal strength, chooses appropriate predefined beam pattern and continually switches the beams as necessary. Overall goal is to increase the gain according to the location of the user. The disadvantage is that since the beams are fixed, the intended user may not be in the center of any given main beam. And second disadvantage is that if there is any interferer near the center of the active beam, it may be enhanced more than the desired user. Adaptive array systems have the ability to adapt in real time the radiation pattern to RF signal environment. They can direct main beam towards the pilot signal or signal of interest while suppressing the antenna pattern in the direction of interferers or signal not of interest. Thus, they can customize an appropriate radiation pattern for each individual user. Hence, performance is much superior compared to the performance of a switched beam system. Now, let's compare a switched beam system with an adaptive array system. A switched beam system may not be able to place the desired signal at the maximum of the main lobe. And they also have the inability to fully reject the interferers. Whereas an adaptive system, it has the ability to control overall radiation pattern in a greater coverage area for each cell site. They have also greater capacity compared to the switched beam systems. 
figure shows a comparison in terms of relative coverage area of uh, switched beam and adaptive array systems. In the presence of low level interference, both types of smart antennas provide significant gains over conventional sectored systems. But when a high level interference is present, interference rejection capability of adaptive systems provides significantly more coverage than conventional or switched beam systems. Adaptive array systems can locate and track signals and dynamically adjust the pattern to enhance reception while minimizing interference using signal processing algorithms. A functional block diagram of such a system is shown in figure. After the system down converts the received signals to the baseband and digitizes them, it locates signal of interest that is SOI using DOA algorithm, direction of arrival algorithm and it continuously tracks signal of interest and signal not of interest by dynamically changing the weights. DOA computes direction of arrival of all signals by computing time delays between antenna elements and later the adaptive algorithm using a cost function computes appropriate weights that result in an optimum radiation pattern. Moving on to the advantages of smart antennas. Main reason for interest in smart antennas is the increase in capacity. In densely populated areas, signal to interference ratio that is SIR is much smaller than signal to noise ratio due to higher interference. Smart antennas will increase useful received signal level and decrease interference level hence improve the signal to interference ratio. Another advantage is increase in range. Since they are more directional, base stations can be placed further apart leading to a more cost efficient deployment. Another advantage is that it offers secure communication. Smart antennas make it more difficult to tap a connection because the intruder must be positioned in the same direction as the user has seen from the base station to successfully tap a connection. Also due to spatial detection nature of smart antennas, they can be used to locate human beings in emergencies. While smart antennas provide many benefits, they do suffer from certain drawbacks. First one, requirement of complex transceivers. Antenna needs separate transceiver chains for each array antenna element. Then second one, antenna beamforming is computationally intensive and hence requires powerful DSPs which increases the cost. But the benefits outweigh the cost. And the last one, an array of antenna elements is necessary because of the need of reasonable gain. Base station antennas should direct signals to the wanted coverage area as effectively as possible. It is also beneficial that the distribution of the power is restricted accurately in order to minimize the frequency reuse distance in the system. First we shall see non-adaptive base station antennas. Gain of the base station antennas towards the coverage area should be as high as possible. On the other hand, the coverage area must be large, so the directivity cannot be increased much in the horizontal plane. Directive antennas are used at the sectorized base station sites, usually having 2 to 3 sectors. In a typical 3 sector configuration, the beam width of a single antenna is usually about 65 degree instead of 120 degree to optimize the coverage and interference. The vertical beam of base station antenna may be tilted down to reduce the interference level in the neighboring cells. Sometimes the beam is shaped so that the vertical plane side lobes above the main lobe are minimized. In addition to the radiation characteristics and bandwidth, Important aspects of base station antennas are weight, wind load, size and appearance. Common types are dipoles, corner reflectors, patch arrays and horns. Regarding adaptive base station antennas, the basic task of adaptive base station antenna is to improve signal to interference noise ratio that is SINR of single connections and maximize the coupling between base station and wanted user while minimizing the coupling with other users. The benefits obtained by using adaptive base station antennas can be classified as first one increased capacity due to increase of SINR, second one increased coverage or range 
due to high apparent gain of base station antenna third one reduced output power especially at the mobile station where battery lifetime is critical three types of adaptive base station antenna options are available first one switched beam antennas second one beam forming and third one adaptive arrays we have already discussed switched beam antennas and adaptive arrays in slides 10 and 11 and about beam forming you will be learning more about beam forming in the class by Rinju Miss. And coming to switched beam antennas, the base station antenna with several selectable beams of which each covers a certain part of the cell area is available. Benefit is that only fairly simple RF signal processing is required. Drawback is limited adaptivity. Coming to beam forming, adaptive beam forming can be used to form pattern maxima to wanted directions and nulls to unwanted directions. But due to limited number of antenna elements in practical adaptive base station antennas, only a few maxima and nulls can be realized simultaneously. About adaptive arrays, adaptive arrays have most complex configuration. Each antenna element is connected to a separate transceiver and DSP is used to control the signal weights. And the benefit of using adaptive array is increase in link capacity. Mobile station antennas. The antenna for a mobile phone should enable connection to the base station in all locations and orientations of the mobile unit. For small cellular handhelds, the incoming field consists of several multipath signals so that the antenna receives several signals with random directions of arrival and polarization. In most environments, vertical polarization dominates, making a vertically polarized omnidirectional antenna like a vertical dipole preferable. The different options are listed. First one is a dipole and monopole antenna. Monopole with phone chassis as the ground plane or an asymmetric dipole whose other half is the phone chassis. That is one option. Then normal mode helical antenna may be used. And the third option is internal antennas. The antenna may be enclosed inside the handset. There are two main types of internal antennas. First one is planar antenna and the second one is chip antenna. Planar antenna is usually a lambda by 4 micro strip mounted on the conducting chassis of the handset. Chip antenna are very small and must be mounted in a certain manner on the circuit board of the phone. Internal antennas may result in a sacrifice in performance, especially if the hand is over the antenna or the unit is close to the head. Now let us conclude this part by discussing the important points. The dipole and monopole are the two most widely used antennas for wireless mobile communication systems. An array of dipole elements is extensively used as an antenna at the base station of a land mobile system while monopole because of its broadband characteristics and symbol construction is perhaps the most common antenna element for cellular telephones, cordless telephones etc. Examples of monopole antennas used in cellular and cordless telephones, walkie-talkie, etc. are shown in figure. The monopoles used in these units are either stationary or retractable. Retractable antennas during non-usage is retracted within the body of the device to prevent it from damage. Units that do not use a visible monopole type of antenna use embedded or hidden antenna element. For example, planar antenna. A helical antenna operating in normal mode may also be used. An antenna configuration that is widely used as a base station antenna for mobile communication and is seen almost everywhere is shown in the figure. It is a triangular array configuration consisting of 12 dipoles with 4 dipoles on each side of the triangle. Each 4, four element array on each side of the triangle is used to cover an angular sector of 120 degree forming what is usually referred to as a sectoral array. Thus we have considered two important topics in fifth module. First one is smart antennas and the second topic is antennas for mobile base station and handsets. And these are my reference and thank you for your patient listening.